Good job. Today, and if you are comfortable to stand, uh, during the season of Easter, we're starting out with some singing, and so I invite you to stand. Uh, the words are on the screen, but you may also look them up in the hymnal. Uh, and let us sing the first two verses of "Blessed Jesus at Thy Lord at Thy Word." Excuse me. call to worship. Come and sit with me. We shall study the word. Together we shall read and understand. Come and kneel with me. We shall break the bread. Together we shall eat and be satisfied. Come and walk with me. We shall part the waters. Together we shall risk and behold. We shall be changed. Uh, this is our opportunity to turn and greet those that have joined us for worship today just by saying hi. Make sure you say hi to those on the live stream up there. And, uh, uh, and after you've had an opportunity to say hello to everyone, you may all be seated. So we, we come to the, um, the announcement time of our worship service here, and uh, one, I uh, want to continue to remind you that we're going to need some help upstairs uh, with the AV system. Uh, as you know, uh, last week uh, was Colleen and Galen's last uh, opportunity to work with us after many, many, many years of service. And uh, so we would love to be able to train you and, and uh, uh, get you up to speed on that. Um, and one of the things that we're doing, um, because uh, the pandemic has really forced so, not just us, but so many folks to adopt technology. Um, if you've had an opportunity to watch our live service, and we know those that are watching at home do, know that we go live about 10:15, so that we make sure that any bugs, anything that it get, kind of gets worked out until church starts at 10:30. And we would like to produce a welcome video. And um, it's just an opportunity, it's kind of an introductory video. Those of you that saw the Zoom service, remember that that's what we did. We had kind of a, a welcome video, Lindsay kind of helped film that, as, as, uh, as, uh, and, and so did Lois. Um, as we kind of walked in, we showed that the church was locked, and then, then they showed me behind what looked like a little kind of a radio deal. I mean, all the equipment, everything. Um, and, and so we would like to do the same. And so I would like your ideas. Already had visited with some of the people upstairs that have given me some ideas. We have some existing footage. We can record some more. We can do some work in progress. Um, have some things that we can kind of put in, fit in. Uh, we know that other churches do it as well. So please let me know. Uh, no idea is a bad idea. 
And um, it just doesn't mean it won't get into the actual final work, but, uh, but we would love to hear from you and, and so as we kind of put this together. Probably something about five minutes, and, and so just to kind of say a welcome, and uh, please let me know uh, any ideas on that. Um, and so also, uh, so want to lift up a couple uh, announcements that have come in online already. Uh, first off, we certainly, we've been praying for Gwen Gosnell. And, um, and so uh, received a note from her mom uh, that just said uh, they haven't received any new test results yet, but she is staying at school longer and uh, less tremors on the new medication. So one of the updates is that she is now on a new medication. Um, they're continuing to run a lot of, a lot of tests. Um, she is able to, to stay at school a little bit longer and, and uh, appreciates all of your prayers. And so we'll lift up Gwen, uh, uh, one of our eighth graders, comes to, eight, uh, comes to youth group. And, and when this is all said and done, the family will be joining us as, uh, uh, as they transfer their membership here. And, and uh, just, a, just a wonderful family, and, and, but we would love to lift them up in our prayer thoughts. Also got a note from Lauren. He says, today we are celebrating Shirley's birthday. We'll be watching the live stream. So we want, want to lift up Shirley Ekdahl's birthday uh, that, is, uh, that is being celebrated today. And uh, so happy birthday, Shirley. We know that you're watching. Um, and uh, uh, let me know. I'm, let me just kind of check the, the live stream here, see if there's any other... Uh, any other announcements? Don't see any. But as I said, uh, there is a little bit of a delay, and so that certainly will come along uh, with live stream. I'd like to turn it over to you for your announcements. Uh, maybe you have an update to, on our prayer list, uh, a birthday and an anniversary. Yes. You have camp cards uh, that you're selling for the scouts. And so I think it's five dollars, uh, which is a discount card. And so please visit with uh, Marley a afterwards. And um, can you tell us, did something hap exciting happen in your family this weekend? Your aunt got married yesterday, so we we congratulate to Kendra and, and Nick uh, that celebrated. Um, and uh, did you find out? Does the church kind of warm up a little bit when the temperature rises? Yes, and when you're all dressed up. Yes, uh, but it was a beautiful wedding, and, and uh, uh, great to see everyone. We we wish uh, Kendra and Nick all the well wishes. So, and I'm sorry. And your birthday is this Friday, so we've got a couple birthdays. So we got Shirley that's watching at, at home, and, and uh, uh, Melissa's birthday is this Friday. Uh, Yes. Her birthday's on May first. No, tomorrow. Her birthday's tomorrow. Mine's on May. 5th. So your mom's birthday is tomorrow, and your birthday is the fifth. So we've got a couple more birthdays to lift up, and I think did I see a hand over here? Was there some other announcements? All right, well, let's go ahead and sing happy birthday. We've got uh, four birthdays being lifted up here this morning. Other prayers, other announcements, birthdays, anniversaries being lifted up at this time. Okay, I now invite our children now to come forward for our children's. Oh, and, and, and as the children are coming up, just to remind you that when we reach Memorial Day weekend, which is coming up in a few weeks, um, we are going to uh, not only go back, go to 930 for worship service for this and the live stream, but we will start the 8 o'clock um, uh, service in the chapel. Um, and uh, we'll have kind of a modified coffee time. And so uh, some of you might have seen the, the, the notice in the newsletter about that. So if you're interested in helping out with the coffee time, uh, um, please visit with, with Lois or Sue, and, and they, they can kind of fill you in some of the, some of the things that we're thinking about. 
Uh, but we're going to be kind of going back uh, uh, to some of the original things that we did before the pandemic, uh, continuing to do the live stream, uh, but that will be on Memorial Day weekend. I've got a sheep, and I've got Jesus. So I, I only, I, there's only two people in this story that we're going to be told. And so, so you, you want to hold the sheep? All right. And who wants to be Jesus? Anybody want to be Jesus? <gasps> okay. All right. All right. So, so what you're going to do is, is uh, now Eleanor is going to read this story, but I think it's a very interesting story. And we're going to, yeah, this is kind of a, it, it's a complicated story. And sometimes grown-ups, we have a hard time understanding complicated stuff. And we know that you kids do a really, really good job. Okay, so here, here's what you do. So, so um, Jesus, I want you to, to, oh, wait, we got one more. We got one more, okay? Mm, come here, come here. Okay, okay. What, what animal do you think would be Peter? It'd be a cow? That'd be good. A unicorn? Okay, you want to be a cow? Okay, all right. All right. Okay, good job, good job. Okay. All right, so, so Jesus, I want you to say to the cow, which is Simon Peter, I want you to say, do you love me? And I want you to say, yes, Lord, I love you. Okay, all right. And now I want you to turn and look at the sheep and say, Feed my sheep. Okay. All right. So um, now I want you to turn to the cow again. And I want you to say, Simon Peter, do you love me? And I want you to say, yes, Lord, I love you. Now I want you to turn to the sheep and say, then feed my sheep. Okay. All right. All right. Now th this is when it gets really complicated. Jesus, I want you to look at the cow and say, Simon Peter, do you love me? Okay, now, now before you answer, I want you to be really hurt. I want your feelings to be really hurt because Jesus just asked you this three times. So I want you, with the cow, to have the saddest look faith. There you go, there you go. That, 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 that cow feels really hurt, right? Yeah, it, you, you've just heard his feelings, okay? So, so how do you think you're going to respond, Mr. Cow, to what Jesus just said? Say, yes, Lord, I love you. Just like when you're really, when, you, when you're forced to apologize to your brother. Say it like that, okay, so. Okay, all right, all right. And, and so I want you to say, turn to the sheep and say, then feed my sheep. Okay, end of the story. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think is going on here? You think Jesus is just being mean to the cow, which is Simon Peter? Yeah, you think so? You think the sheep is just really hungry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> What's that? He, he, he hasn't even fed, fed yet, fed the sheep. Yeah, so here's the deal. Jesus is about to not to be with the disciples for much longer. This is right after Jesus comes back from the dead. And then Jesus is going to disappear, go up to heaven to be with God. And so Peter better figure it out. Pete, and, and, and the sheep... All right, so I want you to give that sheep, give that sheep to your sister. Can you give that sheep to your sister? David? Okay. Because you know who really sheep are? It's all of us. So Jesus is saying to the disciples, it is now your job to be the people that now feed the sheep. And, and what do you think feeding the sheep means? Feed the people. What else? Pr what, what else? Help them. Pray for them. Maybe if someone is, is, 
is really sad, give them a hug. Maybe uh, if someone is hungry, you feed them. If someone is thirsty, you give them some water. Maybe if uh, uh, they need uh, someone to pray for them. That's all the things that the disciples are supposed to do. Yes. It, yeah, maybe if they need that as well. That's right. So, as I said, it's a complicated story, and one that I can kind of understand. You, you know what, Mason, you did, or uh, Sam, you did a fantastic job of making that cow look really sad. So, good job. All right, so, are you ready to pray? All right, put your hands together. Let's say, Dear God, thank you for these stories. As Jesus teaches us what we're supposed to do. Amen. All right. Okay. And if you, I need my animals back and Jesus. And thank you. Oh. Right now, we invite Cherry to come up, who's going to be providing us with some special music.
Thank you. Would you join us now in our prayer of confession? Let us read this together. We grumble and complain about our daily lot in life. We read the newspapers, watch the broadcast news, and moan about the evil which flourishes in the world. And we wonder, where are you, O oh God? We turn our backs on the needs of the poor, or give only a cursory acknowledge of their plight. We throw our hands up in the air and act as though we are defeated. And we cry, why isn't God taking care of all this? Forgive us, patient Lord. Forgive us our arrogance, our ignorance, our pettiness. Forgive us when we could have done something to help someone else, but choose instead to turn away. Forgive us when we, by our attitudes and language, our thoughts and actions, have gone against your will. You are with us, Lord. You lead us daily in right paths and offer to us the bread of life. You stand with us in times of trial and in the presence of those whom we fear, giving us your abundant love. And then you offer to us a place in your eternal home. How can we doubt your presence? Help us to trust you. Help us to praise you. And remember that you have called us to be your witnesses and workers in this world. Give us strength and courage, joy and peace for all the work that you have for us to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for us, his sheep, we pray. Amen. And as we often do, let us use this moment to pray silently and to lift up those that are on our prayer list. as we gather in this place. We read these words that were part of our prayer of confession. And sometimes when we read these words, we, we think, of, uh, think of someone else. We think, oh, 
I know someone that really needs these words. I know someone that uh, I, I need to share this, this prayer with because gracious God, that there's something that, that they need to, to fix and, and, and change in their life. But as we sit, as we pray, remind us, gracious God, that prayer time is for us. It is our opportunity to commune with you. To be reminded, gracious God, that there's so many things that we need to work on. And right now, it's, it's where we are. Yes, we, we, we pray for, for peace. We pray for healing. We, we pray that, that people understand. We, we pray for those that, uh, uh, that are in the hospital. We pray for those that um, are in health issues. We pray for those that, that uh, um, are having financial difficulties. We, we pray for those transitioning from um, a time of schooling into summer. We pray for those that are going from one job to the next. We pray for those that, that uh, um, things aren't getting better, but it's getting a bit worse. There's so much to pray for. Right now, we just ask that a double portion of your spirit be with us as we pray for ourselves so that we can be reminded of the people that you want us to be. Because Jesus is talking directly to us. Not to Simon Peter, not to that cow in the children's sermon, but directly to us. And for this, as we come to our Lord's Prayer, let us pray to you so personally, your witness. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, how I love Jesus. Let us sing verse 1. <laughs> I shared a fairy tale that uh, fit well into our theme on forgiveness, but I admit was in bad taste, and, and uh, there were a few of you that made comments about that, so I do apologize. Um, so today, let me share with you another fairy tale, and this one has a very different ending. Once upon a time in a land far away, they all begin that way, uh, a beautiful, independent, self-assured princess happened upon a frog as she sat contemplating ecological issues on the shore of an unpolluted pond in a verdant meadow near her castle. A frog hopped into the princess's lap and said, Elegant lady, I was once a handsome prince until an evil witch cast a spell upon me. One kiss from you, however, and I will turn back into the dapper young prince that I am. Then, my sweet, we can marry and set up housekeeping in your castle with my mother, of course, where you can prepare my meals, uh, clean my clothes, bear my children, and forever feel grateful and happy for doing so. That night, as the princess dined sumptuously on a repast of lightly sautéed frog legs, seasoned in white wine and onion cream sauce, she chuckled to herself and thought, I don't think so. That's about as cringeworthy as those bad dad jokes from last week, right? 
Well, today our focus is on love. In fact, you're going to hear Jesus say that word a lot, maybe a little too much. As always, everything that we do during this Easter season focuses on the risen Christ stories. These stories are important because when the Bible was finally put into print, they are, when the Bible was finally put together, they made it into print. It's why the people felt the need to keep sharing them and is why they still resonate today. So as the children already illustrated this, we're going to hear how Jesus really gets on Simon Peter's case. So Eleanor? I'm reading from John uh, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said to Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. I'm telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. Thank you, Owen. This passage has always bothered me a bit. I mean, this dialogue between Jesus and Simon Peter is relentless. And it appears that Jesus just doesn't accept the answer. And then by the time we get to verse 17, we can kind of understand Peter's feelings here. He is hurt. He feels like he hasn't been listened to. He's been nagged. So let's look at that word nagging. Uh, the definition of nagging is constantly harassing someone to do something. Is this a case of nagging? And if it is, why is Jesus nagging Simon Peter here, just before he's about ready to leave him? And then we come to that final question, which is today's title for the sermon, Does Nagging Even Work? So let's look at that question because, you know, we all do it. Uh, and regardless of gender, um, I do the taxes for our family. And I have one daughter that I had to nag, and I'm not going to mention Cora's name, um, but uh, um, I had to nag to get her tax stuff to me so I could get it turned into the Nebraska Department of Revenue. Um, I've been known to nag our office staff, especially when it gets close to church conference time. And when we have taken youth on those work trips, I tend to get kind of naggy because you've got deadlines to fill out and rules to obey. So let's go back to this question, does nagging work? Well, I typed it into the internet, and I found that the answer is no. Not one single article said that nagging worked. Now I realize that's kind of disappointing. Even with masks on, I can see your eyes. And you were hoping that I would say yes because we now have a scripture passage that says, see, Jesus says nagging works. So what's going on here? Is Jesus just not in tune to what uh, the internet has to say? Uh, does he not know what modern science says about nagging? Um, hasn't Jesus heard that nagging doesn't work? I mean... Doesn't he know it just creates resentment and stubbornness? And of course, all those people that are going to do the opposite of what you nag them to do. So why is Jesus nagging Simon Peter? 
So we're going to go back to that statement that we have been lifting up throughout this entire Easter sermon series. The stories of the written Christ are written and shared and told for when life and faith is not easy. Jesus is leaving us, or at least he is leaving the disciples. His physical presence is going to come to an end. So what does that mean? Does that mean that things for the disciples are going to get worse? Does that mean that these immature Christians are just going to wander through the desert? Does it mean that uh, they won't know how to function without their leader? I mean, these are all legitimate questions. Questions raised when a beloved parent dies. Or when a spouse that we rely on gets moved into a nursing home. Or when a leader of an organization moves or steps down or is not reelected. You see, this passage is about hope. This passage is about continuation. This passage is about functioning. Remember, the stories of the risen Christ were written and shared and told for when life and faith is not easy. Once upon a time, there was a great man who married the woman of his dreams. With their love, they created a, a little girl. She was a right and cheerful little girl, and, and the great man loved her very much. When she was very little, he would pick her up and hum a tune and dance with her around the room, and he would tell her, I love you, little girl. When the little girl was growing up, the great man would hug her and tell her, I love you, little girl, and the little girl would pout and say, I'm not a little girl anymore. Then the man would laugh and say, but to me, you will always be my little girl. The little girl, who was not little anymore, left her home and went into the world, as she learned more about herself, she learned more about the man. She saw that he truly was great and strong, for now she recognized his strengths. One of his strengths was his ability to express his love to his family. It didn't matter where she went in the world, a man would call her and say, I love you, little girl. The day came when the little girl, who was not little anymore, received a phone call. The great man was damaged. He had a stroke. He was catatonic. They explained to the little girl he, he couldn't talk anymore. and They weren't sure that he could understand the words spoken to him. He could no longer smile, laugh, walk, hug, dance, or tell the little girl who was not little anymore that he loved her. And so she went to the side of the great man. When she walked into the room and saw him, he looked small and not strong at all. He looked at her and tried to speak but he could not. The little girl did the only thing she could do. She climbed up on the bed next to the great man. Tears ran from both of their eyes, and she drew her arms around the useless shoulders of her father. Her head on his chest, she thought of many things. She remembered the wonderful times together and how she had always felt protected and cherished by the great man. She felt grief for the loss she was to endure, the words of love that had always comforted her. And then she heard from within the man the beat of his heart. The heart where the music and the words had always lived. The heart beat on, steadily unconcerned about the damage to the rest of the body. And while she rested there, the, mute, mute, the, the magic happened. She heard what she needed to hear. His heart beat out the words that his mouth could no longer say. I love you. I love you. I love you, little girl, little girl, little girl. And she was comforted. How do we continue? How often have we asked that question, especially when we are faced with insurmountable loss and grief? These questions that we're facing coming out of the pandemic are real. And churches are staring it down. And if they're not, they're in denial. You see, I'm on Zoom calls with pastors of all stripes, not just with the United Methodists. And we're all asking the same questions. And I can tell you, we're getting a lot of predictions. People are going to come back in droves when all the restrictions are gone. Our kids are hungry for Sunday school and youth group and VBS. We get the ads all the time. Purchase this book and, and prepare these pamphlets and, and buy these banners. 
But here's the thing. Nobody knows. We haven't faced anything like this in over 100 years, and our circumstances are so different. But there is one who has the pulse on what will happen. Eleanor, would you read, reread a few of those selected verses again? Okay, the wind changed my page here. Okay. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. You want me to go on? Yeah, just read that last. Oh, Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Jesus is nagging Simon Peter because he's not going to be around. And Simon Peter better get it. Remember, this is the same guy that denied Jesus three times. And Jesus reminds Peter three times to get on board. That's the message of the Christian movement. It now resides in people like Simon Peter and those who come after. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. And the word that, that we need comes from the last line in the text. Follow me. Remember, the stories of the risen Christ were written and shared and told for when life and faith is not easy. It's kind of like this story. In Christian Reader, Jim Corley tells of a conversation he had with a friend named Alex who attended his church. Alex was struggling over his many failures to live the Christian life the way he knew he should. One day they met at the car dealership where Alex worked. Corley writes, That day in his office, Alex got straight to the point. Jim, I feel like a hypocrite every time I go to church because I fail to live for Christ so often. Alex, uh, uh, what do you call this part of the dealership? I asked, nodding to the area outside his cubicle. Uh, you, you mean the showroom? I smiled. Uh, yes, and, and what's behind the showroom? Uh, past the parts counter. Uh, well, the, the service department, Alex said. Uh, and what if I told you that I didn't want to bring my car to the service department if it was not running right. Well, that would be crazy. That's the whole point of a service department, to, to fix cars that aren't running right. You're absolutely right, I replied. Now, let's get back to our initial conversation. Instead of thinking of church as a showroom where image is everything, start thinking of it as God's service department, helping people get back in running order with what God Helping people get back in running order with God is what the church is all about. The stories of the risen Christ are written and shared and told for when life and faith is not easy. Nagging doesn't work, period. It builds resentment, it creates stubbornness. But in this instance, faced with an unknown future, and when thing, we know things are going to be difficult, we have to rely on the nagging ability of Jesus to remind us it is now our responsibility to feed, to love, to disciple, to be the hands and feet and mouthpieces of Jesus. And when Jesus says, follow me, I guess nagging does work. One final story for you. How do you love someone who stumbles? Dave Getz writes a story about pastor and author Stu Weber. Growing up, Weber developed a temper, which blossomed in high school and college. And then I went to the military, Weber said, which doesn't do a lot to curb your temper and develop relational skills. Early in his ministry, he stopped playing church league basketball altogether. His temper kept flaring, embarrassing himself in the church. A decade passed. I, had, I hadn't had a flash of temper for years, Weber said. I thought the Lord has been good. I'm actually growing. 
And then his oldest son made the high school varsity basketball squad. I began living my life again through my son. Weber terrorized the referees. On one occasion, seated in the second row, Weber wound up on the floor level with no recollection of how he got there. He received nasty letters from church members that he had served, who he says now were absolutely right on. But then he got another note. Stu, I know your heart. I know that's not you. I know that you want to live for Christ and his reputation. And I know that's not what happen has happened at these games. If it would be helpful to you, I'd come to those games with you and sit beside you. Stu Weber says it came from one of his accountability partners. Steve saved my life, Weber said. It was an invitation to a gracious extension of truth. He assumed the best, and he believed in me. See, I'm not going to answer that question of whether nagging works. But I just know in this instance that it worked with Simon Peter. He understood the message of love. He understood the message to feed, to disciple, to lead, because these stories are written and shared and told because life and faith cannot be easy. We all need others to step up to disciple to us. And if we're ready, and we hear that nagging message from Jesus to follow, we will do the same. Amen. As we have shared during the announcement time, um, we will go back to ha uh, passing out the offering plates starting on Memorial Day weekend. But for now, we're still using the lockbox and want to continue to thank the Fergusons for letting us borrow that uh, since the time that we have opened up. So, uh, you certainly can put your offerings in there. Uh, we have um, our address. You can send in your offerings, 900 O Street. And then we also have a safe and secure website, uh, which is found on our, our church's website. You just click on the Give Now button, and uh, it is an opportunity for you to, to give. And it, you can even choose as to where your gifts are going to be. Um, so, but... In the meantime, we're going to have an offertory now as we get ready to kind of transition into uh, normal, uh, whatever that's going to look like start on Memorial Day, uh, but to kind of remind us of the many blessings that God gives to us. Lindsay. I want to thank you. It has been a long year. So much has happened. We have lost loved ones. We have seen things happen that we never thought possible. And gracious God, it has tested us. Not as much as things have been tested with our disciples, but we have these examples. We have these stories. We know that they were shared because at some point in someone's life in the community of the early Christians, 
It meant something. It meant something so important that Jesus isn't going to be around. His physical presence would not. But it's up to us. It's up to those that carried the torch. And we thank you. We thank you for these blessings. We thank you that you continue to have the church available for us. We thank you so much that you continue to just wash over your grace to us. And now be with us as we transition into another story. A story of Holy Communion. And for this we are thankful. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, we'll ask you to, to uh, remain seated, uh, but let us uh, have our doxology. those of you that have joined us here in the sanctuary, we invite you to turn to page 17. Um, and uh, the words will be listed on the screen uh, for those of you watching at home. Uh, this will be an, a great opportunity for you to, to get some bread, to have some juice available to, so that you can share in communion with us. Oh, you didn't? Oh, so, okay, all right. So, uh, for those of at home, uh, we apologize, we don't have the words for you, uh, so uh, if you for, are familiar with the words, just mouth them right along, and um, uh, we'll, we'll try our best to kind of uh, feed you right into the liturgy here. Uh, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. As much as you wanted to hear me sing at home uh, so that you would know the words along, I'm not going to give you that pleasure. So, uh, so that's why my mic was turned off and, and you didn't have, uh, didn't have the music there. Holy, you are, holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, shared it with those at the table, and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and, share, and gave thanks to you and shared it with those at the table and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. 
By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. For those of you watching at home, uh, just, uh, I just ask for your patience as I give instructions for those that are worshiping with us here in church. Um, as we have often done during the pandemic, we take advantage of uh, what we have here in the sanctuary. And so we have placed the cups and the bread uh, in individual cups on, uh, on the communion rails. And so we invite those sitting on this side of the church uh, to come on down, work, come down the center aisle and, um, and kind of space out, uh, allow us to have some of that social distancing. Um, kneel if you are able to and um, participate in communion. Uh, they're disposable cups, so we have trash cans on the ends, uh, on the ends for you as well. And, uh, and then proceed on the outside aisles. Uh, those that are joining at home, um, as the folks are coming down and participating in communion, I invite you to join with me as I will participate in the bread and in the sharing of the cup with you online. So I want to remind you that in the United Methodist Church, we practice what is referred to as an open communion table. There is no membership requirement, no church requirement. Uh, this is a gift. John Wesley was very clear. He, he actually had an old English term. Uh, he called it a means of grace. And what it just means, I like to think of it as like a love note. Every time that we participate in this meal, we know we receive that love note from God, that God loves us, and that we're ready to tackle the world and go on from here. So I invite you to come forward and participate in communion, and likewise those watching at home to participate in communion with me. We invite you to come forward. The body of Christ, which is broken for you. The blood of Christ which is shed for you. Amen.
If you're comfortable with standing, would you please stand as we read together a benediction? The Good Shepherd leads me forward from this place into the world to serve God's people, to witness to God's love and all that I do. I go in peace, and God's peace will go with you. Amen. Go forth for God. Verses 1 and 2.